Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Roddy! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody! We're still continuing with the Turnabout Succession! We're on the Day 2 Trial Ladder. This oh, is where yeah. fiends... This is where the fun begins, Anakin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at prequel memes. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, I don't even remember that part. <laughs> what movie I... is that from? Revenge of the Sith, like, really early on. Now is where the fun begins. Oh, yeah, he's um flying in the ship. And yeah. then Obi-Wan's like... Uh, 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 uh. I should make that the thumbnail, just because. <laughs> just because. The very consistent thumbnail format, then Anakin, <laughs> this is where the fun, fun begins. begins. That would be great. October 8th, 1.24pm, uh, District Court, Defendant Lobby number 6. Okay. So, where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, the Drew Misham we, who was killed wasn't Drew Misham the Forger, basically. Huh? Well, then who was he? Well, he was actually... doing her nails. So, you really made those forgeries? Yes. For father. I know it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? <laughs> You've got like the really quiet girl and then like a truce with the sass. Can you tell, tell us what, what happened? happened? Uh. Yeah. My father was a part- uh, a partner? <laughs> My father- hee hee ha! Partner! <laughs> <laughs> Drew and Bob's <laughs> attorneys at law. I don't know why I said partner. It's been a long day. My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent? For making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials I could make, anything. Anything? Father was so proud, and I so happy. It's just right, she has a teddy bear face on her, like... Yeah, overalls. it's awesome. I need overalls with a teddy bear face on them. You wouldn't wear denim overalls. <laughs> I've worn them. I have never seen you wear oh, denim not, overalls. Oh, not overalls, but I have a denim, it's like the suspender skirt thing, and it's denim. Okay, she's wearing, like, denim, like, suspenders, shirt, and pants all in one, but also with shirt and pants and socks underneath it. I would do that in the winter. It's freaking cold. <laughs> but in the end, I was making those. Forgeries. I've never had a good constitution, nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now, because of me, father is... Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So, you were already a... Um, you were already creating your works back then? I started when I was only 12 years old. So the one who figured out that the stamp was poison, that was... Oh, you can do this. Oh, yes! This is bailiff! <laughs> Mr. Justice, it's time! To the courtroom, please! R right! Out of time. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out, and we saw what was underneath. We saw the rough sketches underneath these three finished paintings. I feel like Trucy's getting more sassy <laughs> as your vo the voice yeah. goes on. Yeah, I see. Mr. Justice? Yes! Father, he knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father? He was watching, gathering information. All about the Wright and Company law offices. But lately, we're, we're not just doing law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, play the piano. Well, they're not really gags. Yet, when Father heard you would resume the legal business. How pleased he was. 
I love the face she draws. <laughs> Who is Mr. Misham? How am I supposed to know? What if he was Daddy's Daddy? Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Things are already confusing enough with all these daddies running around. The bailiff's like, hurry up! <laughs> we know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. October 8th, 1.36 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Hey, yo. I, I like her socks. Her socks yeah. are great. It's like Alice in Wonderland socks, kind of. Because they're, like, tall, but they also have, like, the Cheshire cat pattern. Yeah, yeah, I like them. Court is now back in session. What? Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. She just painted them. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked. How did you set up this Drew Misham forger persona? There's that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? <laughs> Very well, miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? Perhaps you'd rather answer my question? Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably similar one? Uh, yes. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who had made the forgeries. The only other voice I could think of for Vera would be like an April Ludgate type of voice. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like she this was fits more goth. better. This does fit be better She's for sure. She's definitely not goth. But, it, but it's, like, more like the, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yet, she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You have seen this before, ya. Yeah. Yes. It was in the desk drawer. Very well. You may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. Well, we put a weird scan on it, so we know exactly what's inside <laughs> it without having to rip it open. Yeah, but we want to know what she knows about it. Right. The red envelope. I created things now. Or I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal. All of it. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Oh. So probably, like, he was like, mm, Don't trust us. Don't trust this. Like, if they figure out where we live. Okay. Like mm. Arietti. We just watched The Rule of Arietti the other day. Oh, great movie. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's Goodbye, fantastic. old table. <laughs> We've had such wonderful memories together. <laughs> hmm. There certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. Not that the witness realizes it. Very well, please begin the cross-examination. Right, okay. I need more information about this forger. This Drew Misham. I created things. <laughs> so these things you were making, uh, you mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. Oh, was this like an abusive type thing? No. Oh, okay. I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Your Honor, she had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. <laughs> You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Hmm, true. Please, tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. Alright. Get on a pow for trying to defend her. This envelope came after my first work. By other than a painting, you mean... You'd only done paintings up to that point? Father had a realization. He 
you noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? For instance, a letter someone had written. Or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Or a signature on a document. A seal upon a letter. None of this makes her sound very innocent at all! <laughs> and the $100,000 promised in this letter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Misham. A new... industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh-oh. Father handled the deal. So, you didn't know how the things you were making were being used? I enjoyed painting very much. I think I understand. The Fräulein has lived in... unusual... in an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Um, did he follow the instructions? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp? This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. received the stamp that was in the envelope. Wow, that's a really good drawing. Yeah, that she drew in like five, less than five seconds. <laughs> what do you mean you received it? Did I do something wrong? D you didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back. Atroquinine. A moment, air forehead. You can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell me, Fräulein Vera, why did you receive this stamp? I like that pose of hers. <laughs> she reminds me of, like, um, Florina a little bit, or is it Flora in Fire Emblem Florina. 7? Florina. Florina. Who's the one that has the blue hair? Fiora. Fiora? A little bit like that. With Fiora, that with Fiora's that not as, as well. shy, though. Right. The, the, the appearance of Fiora with the personality of... I like her hair, though. The long blue hair is yeah. great. Is something wrong? It was... beautiful. Ah, uh, you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? Yes, I think it was. So, you didn't know about the poison? Guess not! So the trap failed by chance, by mistake, thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm, quite the close call. I realize whenever she opens- this is very random. Whenever she opens up the thing to draw something, you know how when you're playing a kid's game, it's like, do you want to quit? Yes, yes no. No, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, I love the drawing she does, it's great. You mean you moved to where the current Drew studio is? We saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I wanted that sounds. Yes, illustrations <laughs> super cool. I would totally read the kids. I love kids books. Kids books which are sounds better weird, than adult like, books. They're different. I like them because you can read them in one sitting, and illustrations are great. There's and, very few books that I've and they're read pretty imaginative that are not picture books that I've liked more, other than maybe like Howl's Moving Castle, the Harry Potter books. Um, it's yeah. probably just like there's a lot out there we just haven't found them. Yeah, but then you, but then sometimes you find like Duck for President and you're Which like, is just yup, like this amazing. is the best one of the best children's books. This single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I'd think Mr. Misham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist, Drew Misham. Good on him for trying to protect his daughter. Makes sense to me. Yep. You did the work and he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Apparently not. About this commemorative stamp, could you tell us more about it? It was very pretty, and more than that... Yes? 
It was a picture of people I liked at the time. This is something new. It was a Beatles stamp. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles? She's like, the Beatles did make, rock. Did they make stamps? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you can buy... No, it was I, the Gaviniers. <laughs> one of my friends used to always send me postcards with Ratatouille stamps because she knew I liked the movie. Oh. And I'll, with, like, Remy and stuff on them. Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. I didn't know you could get cool stamps. We always have boring stamps in this house. We need <laughs> what are you talking stamps. about? They all have the American flag on them. That's no, the perfect stamp. No, we had, like, Christmas stamps. Oh, yeah, I know well. this because I had to mail, like, 10 million thank you cards recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, we, now we break for this. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fräulein. She's just angry. Her face never changes. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. Okay, well, this is all coming together. M magicians I love mysteries, mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. Hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See? See? Is it magic great? Fine, great, yeah, sure. No need to get all excited. But the magic troupe we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Did she just say what I think she said? Magic troop? Now where have I heard that before? The red envelope came after she'd completed her first job. That makes it a letter from her client, whoever wanted a forgery made. Apollo! We're close. We just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope. And the path it took to take Drew Mishim's life. Well, it's probably that one. Gosh, let's look at the, our tickets. Magic show tickets starring yeah. Val and Grammarie. Yeah. Those magicians you liked. Was it this bunch? Thumbs down. <laughs> Apollo, they're not a bunch. Hmm, I see. Weird. Still, I have to wonder, why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? They're not a bunch. Good question! Well, pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat through Grammarie! Still, uh, but the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin? He's- why is he sweating? Um, Prosecutor Gavin? Grim. Grim. Grammarie. What's with Gavin? Might I ask just one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting. Please, tell me. What exactly did you make? Can I ask why? No! Answer the question! Now! <laughs> P Prosecutor Gavin? You're usually not the one whose volume concerns me. Uh, yes, it is unbecoming of me, I apologize. But I must know. Please, Miss Misham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book? Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. Like, like a diary. Wow, why is he? Mad. No! I don't- No! What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. Miss Misham, this book... Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? How did you know? Objection! Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all of your questions. Stop badgering her! He's 
told you nothing, has he? You soiled, sullied mentor! Nothing? Sullied who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy? He never told you about the trial seven years ago? About how he came to lose his attorney's badge? It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. What? Well, that's because he was like, you need to find out yourself. Yeah. Phoenix Wright, tossed out of the profession by false evidence. And the forger who made that evidence. Is this girl standing right in front of me? At what, like 13? Vera, you must tell us! The evidence that you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham you to forge that evidence? For all of our sakes, who was it? This poor girl. I feel so bad. I know. Holy cow. We only met once. You... you met the client? Well, who was it? It was... it was... What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Fat Gavin's. I almost said Prosecutor Fat's face. <laughs> he's not fat. He's burned He's cut. <laughs> She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Yes, what? Is there something about me? Bet you it was Kristoff then. I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book, the diary. Who was it? devil you know the devil himself well everybody's out of the building defendant Vera Misham condition unconscious examiner's diagnosis acute atroquinine poisoning what who poisoned her was it her pen this ends the recording of the trial for the murder of Drew Misham Vera Misham was during the trial poisoned by an unknown assailant the dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. Okay. She's currently in intensive care and is not to be disturbed for any reason. Yeah. A very simple case, at first glance. Until it finally began to show its true colors. Who the heck poisoned her, then? The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. Ha! <laughs> it's so good to see you in an actual suit instead of a bum suit. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. <laughs> that's Prosecutor Gavin! <laughs> Wait, no, that, that's that's not Clavier, that's Kristoff, isn't it? That's Clavier. Is it? He's just wearing sunglasses and has shorter hair but I thought and he no was jacket. I thought he was going against Kristoff. No, he went against Clavier. I thought he went against Kristoff because Kristoff is a defense attorney! How many times do you have to hear this? Because I thought that was when they were talking and he's like, Why are you doing this now? He's like, yeah, because they'd seen each other before, and they, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Clavier. And that's where we must go to find the whole truth. She's adorable. Yeah, she is. Also, she looks like Pearl there. To oh, come continue. on, to be continued. I want more. We're continuing. More. We're continuing. It, it's not even twenty-five minutes yet. We're s saving and going because this is crazy cool. Is this gonna be like Chibi Robo? Showdown the time. Yep. I... I lost! It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? <laughs> the man I killed, of course. Well. It seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why, yes. Over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. Now the case starts getting really good. Seven years earlier, Phoenix Wright's final trial. Yeah, this is, this is why it gets better. Because I was like, how is this going to be good? 
with the weirdo <laughs> and like with this spark brushel spark brushel <laughs> you don't oh like spark boy the courtroom I, is much whiter now <laughs> i love flossing my teeth <laughs> <laughs> I, I love licking my ear <laughs> no not licking my ear licking the pen it would be like it's very t- <laughs> how could you lick your ear you have to be like an anti-ear for that i'm saying like he would like lick the the pen and then like put it on his ear you can put like stuff on like behind your ear yeah but like lick your ear because of that saliva transfer I, I, anyway i guess anyway april 19th 9 27 a.m district court defendant lobby number two come on maya come on maya Whew. okay it's been a long time since i felt like it's such a rookie gotta try and relax Ah, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. Enigmar? I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Oh, morning, Daddy! <laughs> I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? Be picking on you? <laughs> I am fine, as always. This old boy here is here to help me, after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks! My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Uh, this, is this? this is you. Oh, this is you. This is still This is still Trucy. Oh, oh boy. Huh? Me? Look what he started. Uh, um, uh, here. It seems fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At, At least, least only I... less than ten swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell, Magnifique Grammarie. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or some such? Hmm. Not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. Notebook page added to the court oh, record. that's the thing that destroys us. Well, how do you feel about the trial today? We'll get through it. Somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true furrowbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> the switching of attorneys just before the trial. I know it is a difficult situation I put you in. But allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. <laughs> I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. I- impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday, and the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, they've, I'll do what I can for their they sake. They have the exact same pose! Yep. It's so cute! <laughs> I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. Also, gotta ask, does this guy look familiar to you? Uh, maybe somebody who died. Um... My client is Shady Enigmar. <laughs> Shady Enigmar? There's a name! Um, do you st- Okay, do you seriously not see this? The instant I saw this guy, I immediately knew. If this is from a previous game, though, it's been it's so not. long. It's not! Oh. <laughs> it, you're saying it looks like somebody that we know? No, from this game. From this game? Looks like somebody from this game. Is this the dude that um, got bumped off in the first case? Yeah, this poker? is Shady Smith. <laughs> oh, he renamed himself. Oh, no! That's unfortunate. Known, why? To, known to the world as Zach Grammary. But why would... We might get more information about that later. And then Trucy just pops up like, sup? <laughs> yep, that's exactly how it happens. <laughs> a wildly popular magician, star of Troop Grammary. His mentor, Magnify Grammary, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic. Until he was shot dead. And Zach Grammary is the suspect. <laughs> yep. 
Watch, it will be Valent Grammary who did it, and then it will be like, oh, 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 I got off scot free, everybody. I got off scot free. He's, he's just been because he's been in every case, I think. Right? No, he didn't show up till case three. Zach Grammary or not Zach? Um, Valent, Valent? Grammary. Yeah. What was? I thought he was in two other cases. He was he's in, in the, this he was one. In the rock case. He's in this case one and the rock case. Okay. He wasn't but in the rocky case, and he wasn't in the like, first one. That would be interesting if he appeared, and then he was like the true villain, devil all the time. Mm, maybe. April 19th, 10 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby. They have court. They have seven, seven courts? What the they heck? They have like 13, I think. That's crazy. Court is now in session for the trial of Shady and Ingmar. We get the old music I now. think it's interesting that they have this color scheme with it because it looks just like the old games. Yeah. Which is yeah, That was intentional. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Yeah, like the graphics don't look as good. <laughs> is the prosecution ready? He is ripped. I was just thinking, is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is this some kind new kind of crime? Wow. One of the worst. This is a trial, yeah. Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts, the beautiful ladies? <laughs> <laughs> a Gavineers concert's got ten times the thrill this gig's got. Who were you again? Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started, legally, yeah. Gavin? Defense attorney Christoph Gavin's? Ah, uh, figures my bro's more famous in this part of town. Clavier Gavin. Lead singer for the mega-hit band The Gavineers. You're out of your league, rock boy. Uh, wow! I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. <laughs> True, my is debut- it, What? Is it just me or does Phoenix Wright look- like, does his chin look fatter? His, he is, it is the exact same sprite that was used That's in all weird. the other games. <laughs> True, my debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, yeah. I think, uh... Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro-Rock accent, by the way. That is not the accent I'm giving at all. <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up, air attorney right. The other thing that I realized, there's, I mean, you won't understand. There's this character in an anime that I've watched that looks like young okay. Clavier Gavin. In this show, there's like three people who play piano and they're all super different people, but they all are like passionate about the same thing. One of the dudes is like this rock, punk rock dude that's like loves, he's just kind of like the rebellious dude, but then he plays like classical piano <laughs> to, with like the spiky hair and okay. everything. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a good show. Perhaps you would be so kind as to fill us in on the case. Achtun, baby. Time to call on the opening act. What was his name again? Ah, uh, yes. Detective Gumshoe. <gasps> Hit it. Yeah! How is he looking? Oh, he looks exactly the same. Okay. This takes place one year after the last case of trials oh, yeah, and tribulations. And you are... Hey, you were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. Uh, I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe, long time no see. Long time. Hey, you! H huh? Me? Today's the day, pal. Today I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? <laughs> what? You normally lack confidence in your testimony? <laughs> Air Detective, this is my stage. Can the antics. Huh? All this hey, you ween and such. <laughs> and I could care less about your history together. <clears throat> I know why everything looks weird. It's because last time when we recorded this, we didn't have the other screen. Oh, are you looking at the other screen? Usually I am. Because, That's why. Because my neck hurts and then we have the audio is better. Yeah. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. That's specific. The facts are as simple as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. Them's the facts. Okay. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim Magnify Grammary was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magic spell, as it were. Ah, uh, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnify to one of my generation, and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Hmm, yes. Though I'm sure the Unsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Grammary has made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired Magnify's been in the hospital for the last year. Hmm, what was it? A uh, mal-ignorant tutor or something? 
doing something to his uh, liver, I think. Yeah. A malignant tumor, perhaps? In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Magnify's chart Maybe added to the court just record. Died. <laughs> and a bullet just magically appeared in his heart. <laughs> no, it's his final magic trick. He's like, I'm gonna die soon. I might as well make this look intense. <laughs> and, then he, and then he pulls off a back. That would be he's the worst kind of person. <laughs> hmm. The facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock 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 on heaven's door? Why shoot him? I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin when he was shot with a pistol. The syringe was found in the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Small syringe added to the court record. Hmm. I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting? Uh, yes, sir. The circumstances. I love how we're getting like all the first game music say, and stuff. It's a testimony inside of a case, inside of another case. In, in, inside of uh, Apollo Justice's head, <laughs> probably. Oh, by the way, Marty. Yeah. Good cross examination. Music. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. I miss Gumshoe. I mean, Emma's great though. <laughs> Emma, Emma is better, <laughs> in my opinion. But I miss like the phase and Edgeworth. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. What? what You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here the letter in question. To my beloved student, Zach, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain coming on the 13th- uh, okay, that was way too fast. Magnify's letter added to the court record. Very unusual indeed. Uh, come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Magnify Grammarie. Oh, let's go to the profiles. Shitty Enigmar 40. My client in this case usually goes by stage name Zach Grammarie. Magnify Grammarie, check out those sideburns. Slash those are sideburns? I thought those were horns. <laughs> like a bull horn. And the beard. It's 67. He's not even that old. I know. The victim in this case died after That's being diabetes, shot. man. <laughs> diabetes. And, and, and cancer, but... Yeah. True seed Angmar, she's eight. Zach Grimmer's daughter already dresses the part of a magician to the hilt. Clavia Gavin, 17. <laughs> 17. <laughs> That's hilarious. No wonder Phoenix is so cocky. Like He's you're like, out of your league. You're out of your league. <laughs> Star Wrong prosecutor place. and leader slash vocalist for the rock group the Gaviners. Oh wait, is that the Gaviners? There's only one E. No, it's the it's the Gaviners. <laughs> Gaviners. Gaviners sounds way better. Dick Gumshoe, 32, homicide detective in charge uh, of the investigation. Cool. Aw, don't say how old Phoenix Wright is. It's one year after 26. the third game. 26. 25. 26, something in there. Fine. Although, could such a vein as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, you cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? Ah, the devil is in the details, Air Attorney. Well, was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for a half hour, starting at 11 o'clock, the victim, Magnify Grammary, was given an IV. An IV? There it is in the picture, off to the side of the bed. Yep. At 11 o'clock, a doctor would come in to set up an IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night, without fail. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption. 
during his IV. Okay. Very well, shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. It's good to have the old game back. <laughs> I love how he has the sunglasses, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to cross-examine Gumshoe next time. On Phoenix Wright, Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. This is one of the reasons the last case is polarizing, is it's like, now it's not really about Apollo, it's kind of about Phoenix. Right, <laughs> it's totally different. It's like a... But it's, I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's cool. I think it'll be really good once I get an idea of what's... How it's getting how it's, be connected. How it all unfolds and connects. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day. And Achtun, God bless, baby. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>